Both unbearable and essential. That's the Guardian newspaper's review of Exhibit B, which is described by the Barbican Arts Centre as a work of performance art which critiques the human zoo and ethnographic displays that showed Africans as objects of scientific curiosity through the 19th and early 20th centuries. It's translated here into 12 tableaux, each features motionless performers placed in settings drawn from real life. Collectively, they confront colonial atrocities committed in Africa, European notions of racial supremacy and the plight of immigrants today. But Exhibit B was never staged in London. The Barbican decided to cancel the performance art due to a protest that was taking place outside. Exhibit B has already travelled throughout Europe and the reactions to the performances have been mixed, but wherever it went, Exhibit B sparked some sort of protest. The demonstration in London forced the Barbican to cancel the piece. It's scheduled for New York, Paris and Moscow this evening. Joining me to discuss the issues surrounding Exhibit B and the withdrawal of the performance piece from the Barbican is Lee Jasper, a race relations activist in London who joined the campaign to prevent the Barbican Arts Centre from showing Exhibit B, and Manik Govinda, Head of Artists Advisory Services and a curator and writer. I'll start with you, Lee, because you were a member of the group who petitioned to prevent Exhibit B from being performed at the Barbican. How did the protest in London arise? It arose through the actions of a petition that was uh, started by Sarah Myers, a young African woman from Birmingham, who felt that uh, uh, Exhibit B uh, uh, was offensive uh, and uh, in a uh, one multicultural uh, democracy like uh, Britain that um, uh, the show was both uh, offensive and denigrated uh, uh, African culture rather than uh, was a, a bulwark against uh, racism. And having established a petition uh, which attracted well over 20,000 signatures, um, the movement was born. And you yourself took part in, in the protest. Can you tell us a bit about what happened? Yeah, well, we had uh, uh, the protest began with writing letters to the Barbican, asking them for meetings, meetings with the Barbican's board, uh, attempts to meet with the African actors involved in the uh, ex exhibit B, which was denied. Um, uh, more letters to the Barbican, a lobby of the City of London, which is the funding corporation, uh, uh, the main funder for the Barbican Art Centre. Uh, and eventually, as a last resort, uh, after those uh, discussions uh, had failed to uh, produce a result, a picket that was held outside on the opening night of Exhibit B down there in Elephant and Castle. Now, um, and obviously, uh, because of the reports, we know that the show was cancelled and the, uh, the Barbican issued a statement explaining why. Um, just describe to us why people were there protesting in London. Well, I mean, I think that, uh, I think there's certain things that one has to understand uh, in relation to uh, uh, why people were so motivated around this matter. One, I think that Britain as a country has just uh, is far more advanced in understanding racism than most other countries uh, in the world, especially the kind of subtle neoliberal racism uh, that poses itself as an open democracy uh, and yet uh, has a sort of hyphenated citizenship for black and ethnic minorities, uh, uh, members of, of that society. I think secondly, there is the reality that uh, the issues that it, it gave rise to, the issues of slavery and colonialism, these are all being part of a broad movement uh, 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 to secure both an apology for slavery uh, uh, and a recognition and reparations for slavery that have not been met. And the view is uh, that uh, these uh, our ancestors are not some sort of dry, dead uh, 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 relics of our historical past, but are actually live beings, part of the world in which uh, uh, Africans inhabit. Uh, and in relation to, uh, to, to that, uh, there, was the, what, there was the issue that the Barbican being 99% white, the City of London being 99% white and 100% Tory, uh, who elect 15 members of the 20-strong Barbican board, uh, in conjunction with a white South Africa uh, artist from South Africa, have determined what they think is anti-racism in a modern London. And it was found to be wanting, it was found to be unacceptable, and it was found to be unoffensive. 
I, th I think uh, having you know read around certain uh, articles and reviews of the exhibition, I think um, the the makeup of of artistic boards is is a, is a topic we could return to. Um, I think uh, I'd just like to bring uh, Ma Manik Govinda into the conversation now. What was your take, Manik, on the um, decision by the Barbican to stop the performance, which was as a direct result of the protest? Uh, well, I did have a ticket to uh, go and see Exhibit B on the, um, uh, the Saturday that it was due on. Um, obviously, I was denied that right um, to um, see the performance uh, because of the, uh, the protest and the subsequent closure. Now, I don't think the Barbican would have uh, uh, closed this performance lightly. Uh, without a doubt, the police must have exerted um, uh, pressure on the Barbican uh, uh, under the uh, risk assessments of public safety and uh, uh, the safety to the performers. Um, and, you know, there is a video, um, not uh, by mainstream media, that uh, uh, clearly demonstrates that the police um, took sides with uh, the protesters um, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the Barbican's hands were tied. They had, to, they had no choice but to cancel the, the, the run of this performance. The Barbican had no choice, in your opinion, to cancel the performance. Um, as someone who had a ticket to see that performance, first of all, tell me why you wanted to see it. Well, um, I work uh, as an artist producer. I work with artists creating challenging, risk-taking work, um, sometimes provocative, sometimes controversial. Um, and um, I know of Brett Bailey's work. I've never seen it directly, so I, I really wanted to know what this uh, piece was um, about. And. Um, I think uh, for me, um, as uh, a campaigner also, uh, I believe in artistic freedom, in the right for the artist to uh, express um, through art uh, what he or she um, wants a public to experience. Uh, so that, that right for us as the paying audience, um, uh, that, that right was denied. We were denied an opportunity to see, hear uh, and attend this, um, this performance piece. Lee Jasper, um, yeah. having heard then from Manic, I'm sure you've heard a lot of the arguments about its censorship. Is there any way you see it from an artistic viewpoint or is it purely centred on the issue that it's a racist exhibition? I think what you've got to take into account is the context of this exhibition. exhibition. First of all, the Barbican could have chose to put that play on in a venue that it could have run very easily all week. Why it choose to put that uh, exhibition on in a subterranean vault in the middle of a tunnel, in, a, in the middle of an elephant and castle, gives you part of the explanation why the uh, demonstration uh, was viewed in the way it was. It was a tunnel, it was loud, it was amplified, uh, and uh, the Barbican uh, and the vault, funnily enough, actually having agreed with me where the demonstration ought to be placed, uh, then rearrange the barriers without consultation and put them virtually right outside their own front door. So they've got a lot to uh, a responsibility to take. I think the other thing is around this violence. Nobody was arrested. No charges were made. No complaints of violence were made. No laws were broken. Uh, uh, it did not, the demonstration was noisy and voluble uh, and dynamic. Uh, uh, but other than that, it was completely within the law, which is why no arrests were made. I think on the issue of rights and the rights of freedom of speech, I, we didn't censor uh, Brett Bailey. The Barbican chose not to put that show on. In fact, the show in the UK had been seen in Edinburgh, and presumably they could have chosen another venue to put it on where they could have organised themselves in such a way that uh, a demonstration wasn't capable of closing it. Uh, there was incompetence on that part. There was incompetence on behalf of the Barbican. In the most multicultural city in the world, uh, the our major world leading art centre has no uh, 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 relationship with London's black communities in order to ensure that the issue of uh, contentious artwork, which has been admitted by all, even those who haven't seen it, that this is a deeply contentious artwork, is, uh, uh, is informed, their decision to take those pieces of artwork is informed by the, by the view of over 40% of London who are black and ethnic minorities. They don't have that relationship. 
and therefore an all white board run by uh, a conservative administration funded by them uh, uh, made a error in procuring this work without consultation with the black community uh, and uh, you know certain people wish to blame the black community for exercising its democratic right to protest as being the major sin here. Well, we don't buy that. The sin lies with the absolute failure of the Barbican to have any uh, uh, credible, sustainable, long-term relationship with black community organizations and black and ethnic minority arts organizations in the capital. Had they done so, they would have, they would have uh, heard an informed view uh, about this piece prior to procuring it, which could have avoided what has turned out to be a, a major issue uh, for the Barbican itself. Do you think then that had the Barbican opened up a dialogue with yourselves when you offered um, letters and approached them for meetings, that you would have still championed the boycotting of this show? Because you've got the well, two this show issues. is no Anne Frank exhibition. Okay, it's no. It's, it doesn't come with a sort of resource pack for schools' work. It's not preceded by any consultation with the uh, communities for whom this artwork is intended to benefit. We are supposed to be the beneficiaries of this work because it is supposed to challenge uh, uh, racism uh, and push that debate forward. But without any consultation uh, with uh, said communities, this uh, predominantly white institution uh, with its all-white funding board, uh, as I say, uh, with no input from any uh, uh, black and ethnic minority communities, uh, has made this uh, critical error. And they're the ones should, that should carry the blame and the responsibility for it. Uh, uh, and it's curious that this discussion is centering around uh, uh, as though the black community doesn't have a right to engage in, um, uh, you know, democratic protest. But you also suggested that had the right people been engaged in the process of procuring and curating uh, this exhibition, that it could have been held at a potentially different venue. Do you, would you have supported that? Um, no, I, I mean, I think the, the, the work as it stands is offensive. Uh, and so uh, unless the artist in those pre-negotiations pre and the Barbican was susceptible to hearing our concerns and amending uh, the uh, presentation, amending the exhibition, uh, the tableau, as it were, uh, then I, I sense that we would still have objected uh, to the show in its current form. And can we say that this show has been objected against uh, in other places in Europe, in Berlin? The show was stormed by an organisation called uh, uh, Stagewatch. Uh, such was the outrage. In South Africa, uh, we've been told that this uh, enjoys the blessing of South African artists and supported by the Rainbow Nation. But we've been inundated by calls from uh, African artists in Cape Town, the hometown of Brett Bailey, who say that their work is routinely ignored and that their voice is routinely silenced by an overwhelming propensity in the Cape Town arts establishment to favour white men and their commentaries uh, on our condition. So the notion that uh, it somehow uh, London is out of sync with the rest of the world is wrong. The notion that black communities' democratic right to protest somehow is trumped by people's uh, right to freedom of speech is clearly wrong in any intellectual or moral sense. Uh, and the actions of the Barbican in being an institutionally racist organisation uh, is the real cause of what we now see as the contention around this play. Um, I, I, Manic, would you like to respond? Um, I mean, I think uh, with regards to um, artistic freedom and freedom of speech, um, it is um, a hard, for, hard fought for right. And we know that uh, through civil rights movements and through the uh, uh, anti-slavery movements of the 19th century, that freedom of speech were essential to uh, the victory of ordinary people. Now, your argument, Jasper, is that uh, that freedom of speech is only here for the privileged few. Um, I, I would disagree with that. I think, um, you know, if we look at what happened to the Barbican earlier this year, where a, a, a grime event was stopped uh, by the police under f uh, Form 696, we can see that if, you start, of if you start to erode um, freedom of association and freedom of expression and speech, that's what's going to happen. I think the uh, unfortunate situation with uh, uh, Exhibit B was that um, 
the police do not want to get into, involved in a race issue. They don't want to be seen defending art. Um, and I think um, what the police did was to put a considerable amount of pressure on the Barbican to stop the run of the show for the next few days. I would have hoped that uh, by the time I arrived on Saturday that I would have the right to go and see Exhibit B. Well, I mean, my response to that is, first of all, the black community doesn't uh, uh, understands well that we are censored every day. The grime event that you talk about is a black is an urban form of uh, you know it's inspired by the black community and now shared by lots of youth in in London. Uh, black events of all sorts are are, are censored, curtailed, stopped. Uh, institutionalized racism and the culture of that means that censorship in this sort of uh, liberal democracy where all citizens are treated equal before the law doesn't exist for black people. We lived in a dual reality in this society where some have the privileges and claim the, the, uh, the right of freedom of speech and some are never given that right in the first place. And I think so we understand the nature of censorship. To suggest that the police, the metropolitan police, is somehow shy of dealing with black communities it's so bizarre as to be you know uh, 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 unbelievable really uh, the stop and search figures uh, the number of black men dying uh, in police custody all of these issues uh, point to a metropolitan police service that is quite happy executing operational racist policing policies and um, and uh, uh, having racially profiled black communities um i think that uh, uh, so I think that uh, uh, our colleague in the room is uh, 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 misguided uh, and misunderstands the black condition uh, in London. London is a separate country even from the rest of the United Kingdom, much less the rest of Europe. We have a, a long history here of fighting racism. The black community's view of racism in this country is, is very sophisticated due to that long experience of being offered the liberal dream of being equal citizens in a first-class democracy, only to be relegated to third-class citizens, uh, having the quality of their lives eroded by racism. Lee, do you think then that the um, the event at the Barbican and the petition to uh, for it to be closed and not to go ahead because it was deemed as racially offensive highlights other issues within the city? So in some way, art is almost doing its job at highlighting other social issues. Well, if it only was, I mean, you know, artists are a bit like, um, uh, you know, uh, well, I, 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 it, it, the reality is, is that when you look at the arts world in London, it is less representative than the city of London. It's less representative than Metropolitan Police Service. Uh, the Minister of Arts, uh, whose name escapes me, recently called a meeting with all arts organisations bemoaning the fact that in the arts and cultural sector, black representation is going down, not up. I wanted to know what people in the industry were going to do about ensuring we had adequate representation. So it does speak about uh, uh, and reflect uh, the broader issues of racism in society. But there is no special place for arts to be had in that. Because when you look at the profile of people working in arts organisations, it is uh, massively, overwhelmingly white. Uh, uh, with black and African and Asian and other minority groups making up a very small percentage uh, of that overall or total. Now, if a Tory government recognises that in the relation to the arts world, one wonders when the arts world is going to wake up and have a proper conversation that is informed by the reality of the power dynamics of racism and the reality of institutionalised racism on the lived experience of black communities and take that seriously by getting its own house in order. Had it done so, we may not be here. The arts is not the most greatest paid uh, profession uh, in, in, in London. Um, I think people who uh, engage with it do it because they, they, they are fans. They love the, uh, uh, the arts. And, and that you know, means a lot of other sacrifices that one makes uh, financially and you know, lifestyle and so forth. Um, now, I think that um, you know, the, as a profession, uh, it's a very, uh, uh, it's a specialist one. You know, you can't um, a, sp a particle physicist uh, uh, is a specialist profession as much as working as a curator or as a programmer is, and um, and wh why 
uh, our diverse kind of society uh, may not be kind of going into uh, those professions. That's something that needs to be explored further. I quite agree with you there, uh, um, just uh, Lee. But um, in terms of uh, what's on offer in London, uh, London is one of the greatest cities uh, in terms of uh, 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 as a global cult uh, cultural capital. And um, you know, only this month, uh, uh, th there's this, I literally counted about half a dozen exhibitions featuring um, uh, black uh, uh, artists of African descent uh, uh, exhibiting. Um, currently, there's um, y we have to just be more active about engaging with the arts, and that's something that you know, from a working class background that I came from, I decided to do. There was no kind of uh, uh, support for by my parents to do that. It's something I chose to do because I had a great passion for it. And I think anyone who has a great passion for the arts will find their way through it in, in, in the professions, on boards as well as uh, in senior positions. But obviously, if you can draw on something positive from this um, as a campaigner for race relations, what, what would it be? Well, we walked to the, um, prior to the, uh, the uh, demonstration, we, uh, in discussion with the Barbican, because what we said to their board uh, and their chair, Sir Nicholas Kenyon, is that what we need is, is a strategic discussion about how we take this issue forward, about your lack of representation, your failure in relation to equality and diversity, how we can make that better. What should Barbican outreach work look like? You know, the fact that you've got artists being brought in from African-American and African and this and people from all over the world, India, is absolutely great. But you don't uh, seek to, uh, uh, to mask the fact that you have no internal commitment to equality in your home city uh, by having a sort of roster of, of artists that are drawn in from out the world. What about the youth here in Britain? who need artistic platforms. We spoke earlier about the issue of, of, of grime and the censorship in relation to that. So we did offer them a way forward. We did say that after the, the demonstration, we were happy to organize uh, black and ethnic minority artistic groups with an interest in the matter, to come together with the Barbican to have a discussion about what a new framework for arts could look like that could uh, uh, seek to improve matters and take issues forward. And the only reason that that, that hasn't happened is because the Barbican was insistent on relying on a racist trope which seemed to suggest uh, that we were the sort of equivalent of the ISIS book-burning rabble mob of violent, uh, 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 violence-threatening uh, 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 black people. Uh, that is so stereotypical as again to compound the original offence. So we're desperate for a, a broader conversation about the strategic issues. But I'm afraid that the, the Barbican, in relation to ways sought to handle these matters, has really confirmed for us its uh, complete incapability with its, com uh, with its current board to enter into any sort of meaningful discussion. Now, we intend to take the discussion forward with others who have a much more progressive view a much more open view uh, to these matters. And over the next uh, weeks and months, we'll be announcing initiatives to take that forward. In the meantime, really, we're calling on the people of Russia and the people of Paris and others to uh, look at our petition. I know that there is a French petition mobilized in relation to these matters uh, at the Exhibition B uh, uh, tour hitting uh, Paris. Um, I know that we've already alerted our, our people in America in relation to this particular uh, exhibit. So this will be a global discussion, of no doubt. But we're more than happy to learn the lessons of it, from it and have those discussions going forward here in the United Kingdom. Uh, Thanks, unfortunately, Lee. the Barbican seem a lot less keen than we are. Well, I think uh, what is worrying is that um, the, the, the closure of Exhibit B, I think, is, 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 is a sign of the times. It's a sign of the times of, of, of a more censorious approach to uh, culture. Uh, we saw it with the Rushdie affair. We saw it ten years ago in Birmingham with uh, uh, the, the play by the Sikh playwright um, Gurdip. Um, sorry, I forgot her surname, but um, where um, the Birmingham rep was uh, having to consult uh, the Sikh community about this play, and then eventually it was closed down by the Sikh community. Now, what we're going to see, I think, if if the arts sector is going to have to consult. Uh, every community uh, when it decides to put on uh, a non-white uh, 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 subject-based uh, play or exhibition, uh, we are going to see 
um, uh, almost a, a kind of equivalent of the British Board of Film uh, Censors uh, in operation from various communities. And that is going to stifle artistic expression. It's going to create uh, a much more um, safe, conventional, risk-averse uh, culture. And this is what's going to start to happen. I'm a bit worried about what Lee has just said uh, about uh, talking to various other arts institutions, uh, almost as 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 uh, you know uh, as some kind of um, a committee. Um, to either approve or, 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 or make recommendations. Um, I, uh, I don't think that is right or good for art or culture in this country or anywhere else in the world. Can okay. I just say yep. that the artwork that we're talking about is a contentious artwork by the Barbican's own definition and that the issue is not consultation around artworks per se, although I expect all contentious artworks to be in some senses informed by the communities to whom they're, you know, they're, they're, they're the backdrop for or the target of or the beneficiaries for. But the fact that the Barbican remains, uh, it, it seems to me incredible that, you, that we have a 99.9% .9 group of white people determining anti-racist art and um, our colleague doesn't seem to think that that's an issue, except in the most sort of uh, mildly liberal way. It is the fundamental reason why we've ended up in this position. Nobody's talking about a board who's, who, who, who checks off all the artwork, but where there is deeply contentious artwork, um, you'd expect in a multicultural city that the Barbican could rely on its relationships with black communities to check with them uh, in an informed way about what they thought about these things. So it's not a matter of routine censorship. And he's intellectually dishonest to suggest that that's what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is that the Barbican should have a stable, ongoing relationship with its black communities, a part of which could be the uh, uh, a referral and consultation with uh, such communities when deeply contentious uh, uh, pieces of art uh, uh, do come along. And I think that's uh, sensible for any, uh, any multicultural uh, community, because offence can be caused, uh, and it's important that institutions are alive to the sensitivities of those communities who they're supposed to uh, uh, represent. Uh, we talk about all white management groups as if it's the normative, as if it's you know absolutely non-problematic. Uh, I just don't, I just don't understand it. I don't get it. Who decides what is anti-racist art? Who decides what is art that is that that moves the debate about racism forward? Who decides that? Well, Lee, um, I think uh, artists themselves will define what their work uh, uh, is about or trying so to. So the audience is no part in that. Yeah, the audience uh, uh, is 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 the is, is, are the individuals that will voluntarily read the book or go and see the play or buy that ticket. Um, now, um, you know. Yeah, but who determines what anti-racist art is? I, I, I don't like the term of anti-racist art. Well, that's what this is claimed to be, Exhibit B. Uh, I think the, the, the Exhibit B was a work about empire and racism and that legacy and that history. It was challenging it, racism. It's, it, was, it was challenging... Uh, it's anti-racist racism. art. I mean, it was you know. challenging racism. It was about racism. So who uh, determines what racism is and how it's to be challenged? Well... The, I think that's, that's, that's up for discussion uh, in terms of... Uh, Black people decide what's racist. Like, women decide what is sexist. Surely. Well, I disagree with you there. Well, uh, we'll have to disagree, I, I think, because think, any time that white people think, start to define uh, what anti-racism is, we are in big uh, trouble. And that's how the Barbican got themselves into this problem. There, there is a kind of mutual relationship that goes on between individuals. Now, if you want to talk about, you know, kind of a wider societal or community forces, that's a different thing. But with regards to um, uh, Brett Bailey, uh, his his uh, re relationship with the performers and his relationship with the the, 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 the programmers that that puts his work on, uh, that is, I think. You know, without a doubt, a dialogue. It's not. It's not dominated by uh, 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 one voice over another. It isn't. No. I mean, you, you need to read the uh, the statements from the uh, the thirteen actors. That uh, I read the statements from the thirteen actors, yeah, we're, we're, but I also yeah. read and met with one hundred and thirty actors who walked away from the play because they felt it was racist and didn't want to take part in it. But that never seemed to find itself into the public discussion. But is an actual fact. So there was very many more people in opposition to this than were supporting it. 
both black and white, because many of the 23,000 people on our, on our petition were white people who came to exactly the same conclusion after explanation uh, 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 as we did. I'm going to have to leave well, it there. That just shows the diversity of both black and white people in London, and that's a healthy thing. Uh, you, you, Absolutely. You we've, got a, we've got a stronger sense of anti-racism in London than most other countries in the world. And, and many uh, uh, other people who, who were aghast about the, the, the closure of uh, uh, since, uh, Exhibit B. And the yeah, well, they're, they're the same people who are not aghast that a 60% unemployment rate of black youth in, in this city or the rate of stop and search or the rate of black men dying in police custody. So they're entitled to their liberal outrage, but we'd like a little bit more balance in terms of human rights and black people's rights in this country uh, because we don't see this outrage when our rights are trampled on on a day-to-day basis. Lee, uh, the, we have to. Uh, I know. Um, <laughs> man, it, keep the tape running. Where the anti-racist movement needs to focus on. It is about. Uh, it's been a great discussion. Anyway, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. Bye. I'd like to thank both my guests, Lee Jasper and Manik Govinda. Thanks for listening. Which was denied. Um, uh, more letters to the Barbican, a lobby of the City of London, which is the funding corporation, uh, uh, the main funder for the Barbican Art Centre. Uh, and eventually, as a last resort, uh, after those uh, discussions uh, had failed to uh, produce a result, a picket that was held outside on the opening night of Exhibit B down there in Elephant and Castle. Now, um, and obviously, uh, because of the reports, we know that the show was cancelled and the, gar- uh, the Barbican issued a statement explaining why. Um, just describe to us why people were there protesting in London. Well, I mean, I think that uh, I think there's certain things that one has to understand uh, in relation to uh, uh, why people were so motivated around this matter. One, I think that Britain as a country... The performances have been mixed, but wherever it went, Exhibit B sparked some sort of protest. The demonstration in London forced the Barbican to cancel the piece. It's scheduled for New York, Paris and Moscow this evening. Joining me to discuss the issues surrounding Exhibit B and the withdrawal of the performance piece from the Barbican is Lee Jasper, a race relations activist in London who joined the campaign to prevent the Barbican Arts Centre from showing Exhibit B, and Manik Govinda, Head of Artists Advisory Services and a curator and writer. I'll start with you, Lee, because you were a member of the group who petitioned to prevent Exhibit B from being performed at the Barbican. How did the protest in London arise? It arose through the actions of a petition that was uh, started by Sarah Myers, a young African woman from Birmingham, who felt that uh, uh, Exhibit B uh, uh, was offensive uh, and uh, in a uh, one multicultural uh, democracy like uh, Britain, that um, uh, the show was both uh, offensive and denigrated uh, 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 African culture rather than uh, was a, a bulwark against uh, racism. And having established a petition uh, which attracted well over 20,000 signatures, um, the movement was born. And you yourself took part in, in the protest. Can you tell us a bit about what happened? Yeah, well, we had uh, uh, the protest began with writing letters to the Barbican, asking them for meetings, meetings with the Barbican's board, uh, attempts to meet with the African actors involved in the uh, exhibit B. Both unbearable and essential. That's the Guardian newspaper's review of Exhibit B, which is described by the Barbican Arts Centre as a work of performance art which critiques the human zoo and ethnographic displays that showed Africans as objects of scientific curiosity through the 19th and early 20th centuries. It's translated here into 12 tableaux, each features motionless performers, placed in settings drawn from real life. Collectively, they confront colonial atrocities committed in Africa, European notions of racial supremacy and the plight of immigrants today. But Exhibit B was never staged in London. The Barbican decided to cancel the performance art, due to a protest that was taking place outside. Exhibit B has already travelled throughout Europe, and the reactions to it has just, uh, is far more advanced in understanding racism than most other countries uh, in the world, especially the kind of 
subtle neoliberal racism uh, that poses itself as an open democracy uh, and yet uh, has a sort of hyphenated citizenship for black and ethnic minorities uh, uh, members of, of that society. I think secondly there is the reality that uh, the issues that it, it gave rise to, the issues of slavery and colonialism, these are all being part of a broad movement uh, 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 to secure both an apology for slavery uh, uh, and a recognition and reparations for slavery that have not been met. And the view is uh, that uh, these uh, our ancestors are not some sort of dry, dead uh, uh, relics of our historical past, but are actually live 